uh, revolutionary greetings, comrades. Um, the MEC for Limpopo, Comrade Popi, uh, sparked a debate on uh, how to deal with migrants who need to access health facilities in South Africa. Some of the migrants are not documented. <clears throat> it is a challenge that uh, we are faced with, and uh, this is an ongoing discussion. Uh, she has raised, as we said in the last video, critical questions that all of us must attend to. What we opposed was the platform that uh, she used um, to speak to the patient in the manner in which she did. I have seen another video where she is in a hospital speaking to, to other patients. Um, I am not 100% if that video is authentic, but I have seen the video circulating. And I take it that it is a kind of authentic. And I want to say that the issues that she raises in the second video, so I'm not sure which one came first, but this one that I've seen circulating, she again raises issues, but this time she is not raising them in the manner in which she did in the first video. This is why we support her. And I must state categorically that uh, we support the issues that the MEC for Health in Limpopo is raising for the following reasons. That uh, when the political parties in 2018 in Zimbabwe presented their political manifestos or ele election manifestos to the people of Zimbabwe, among others, they promised to provide health to all in Zimbabwe. They promised to rebuild the economy. They promised that every Zimbabwean will have access to health. And that this is not happening. We must also remember that uh, I think it was January, February 2019, when the ANC delegation went to meet the ZANU-PF delegation in Arara. And when the ANC delegation went there, it understood that uh, there was a crisis in Zimbabwe, and there is still a crisis. And uh, the question which was being raised, or the discussion was, how do you assist the Zimbabwe? to come out of its crisis, economic and political, to an extent that it begins to take care of its own citizens, providing health services, and so forth. But of course, ZANU-PF, as arrogant as it has always been, said that there was no crisis, and it still maintains that there is no crisis in Zimbabwe. So in the video that I saw, the MEC correctly says, which we support, that any Zimbabwean who receives medical treatment in South Africa, the Zimbabwean government must receive the bill or must be billed. And I think this is the correct position to take. It is the correct position to take that the victims of the ZANPF misro will get treated. But the government of Zimbabwe must pay for the treatment of its citizens. And on this, the MEC is correct. Because if South Africa pays for its own citizens, Uh, when uh, workers in the health profession in Zimbabwe demand better working conditions, they are fired. The leader of the union in Zimbabwe has been fired, Nancy Union, on the basis that nurses 
are asking government as their employer to pay them a living wage. You also remember that when nurses went on strike, at some point, Deputy President Chiwenga fired them all. Because in their minds, public sector workers are members of the opposition. And we have said that uh, whether they are members of the opposition, they are members of the ruling party, they are not members of any political party, it is not an issue. The issue is they need a living wage. The issue is they need proper clothing when they go to, to the workplace. Things, simple things like gloves are in short supply. And uh, this is what uh, the unions have been raising. So there's this tendency by Zanu PF government not to deal with the issues that workers in Zimbabwe are raising. They will simply donate workers to opposition parties and say, no, you are agents of imperialist forces a, you are an extension of a regime change agenda and, and, and they want the world region to believe this propaganda that no, 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 no a, a, these workers are agents of regime change but thanks to the MEC for Limpopo and the others who are beginning to say the government of President Nangagwa must be paid and uh, the Limpopo government will send the bill to the government of Zimbabwe to, to pay. You will recall that uh, under the former president Mbegi administration, uh, former president Mbegi was accused of uh, quite diplomas. And he used to ask, is there any loud diplomas? And they were saying the issues that uh, the MEC is raising, these are the issues that probably get raised and close the doors. We don't get to hear about them. But when these issues are now in the open, it requires all of us to engage and say, Zimbabwe is rich in minerals. Gold is being smuggled outside the country. The gold that is smuggled annually, it is enough to pay for everyone who needs to be treated in Zimbabwe. But it, got, it gets smacking. Corruption is the order of the day. So we cannot, we cannot allow ZANU-PF to hide behind the anti-imperialist rhetoric. How, how, how do you say you are engaged in the strategy against imperialism when you have an, um, an ambassador in Israel. I mean, it, it does not add up. Hmm? You have an ambassador in Israel and you are saying you are engaged in, an, in, an <laughs> in a strategy against imperialism. It's a contradiction. And we know what Israel, apartheid Israel for that matter, is doing to the people of Palestine. You cannot during the day stand up and say you support the struggle of the people of Palestine. But at night you appoint someone to be an ambassador in Israel. It cannot be. So this rhetoric must come to an end. The workers in Zimbabwe are demanding a living wage from their employer who happens to be government. 
ZANU PF government must build health facilities, must provide medicines in the health facilities, must ensure that Zimbabweans are treated inside Zimbabwe. By the way, by the way, we we always we always say ZANU PF supporters might be having their own hospitals they are treated in this crisis affects even ZANU PF supporters only the elite in ZANU PF they will, they will go to China they will come to South Africa they will go to Singapore for treatment they are very very few the elite but the majority that vote for ZANU PF, the majority in the lower structures of ZANU PF itself, branch, district, province, they have no luxury of going to receive treatment outside. We live with the ZANU PF members. We know them in our villages, we know them in our towns, in our cities. They are our neighbors. They are also begging. The only difference is that they've been told that the reason there is decay in our health facilities is because of sanctions, and they believe that. That's the only difference. But if a ZANU PF supporter or member, card caring member, a member of the Central Committee for ZANU PF, right? If their child is ill, they have no money to take the child outside the country. Take it from me. Because, let me explain this to you so that you understand. You do not get paid to be a member of ZANU-PF Central Committee. That's what you must understand. The only people that get paid were paid by Parliament for that matter. Are members of parliament and they are paid peanuts. We'll discuss at some point how much Zimbabwean MPs get. Those that are paid handsomely and who afford to go outside the country are cabinet ministers. If, if a child of a cabinet minister or a member of the political bureau is sick, or they themselves are sick, they can afford to go outside the country to receive treatment. But if a commissar of ZANU PF in a province falls sick or their child is sick, they have no option but to queue in a hospital in Zimbabwe, which is nothing. And the alternative would be for them to pick up their passports and they travel to Limpopo province to seek medical assistance. This is what the MEC of Limpopo is raising. And this is why we are saying we agree with her that uh, Zimbabwe must pay for the people that are receiving treatment in South Africa. Let the people that are sick coming from Zimbabwe get treated in South African hospitals if there are facilities to do so. But let the government of Zimbabwe pay. Because you know what? If, if you then bill the Zimbabwean government, then we'll begin to have a proper conversation on the nature of the crisis in Zimbabwe and how to resolve the crisis. As I have said, for over 20 years, for over 20 years, ZANU-PF has projected itself as Pan-Africanist, as a party engaged in the struggle against imperialism. There is no Pan-Africanist that kills its own people. No way. 
a pan-Africanist cannot commit a genocide against his own people. You cannot. Yes, as we have, we have discussed in previous videos, that in Zimbabwe, we are victims of imperialism, of imperialist forces. We agree. And we have located where this started. It started 1963 or before that. And we have said in previous videos that the split of ZAP in 1963 led by Capricorn Society was in the main sponsored by imperialist forces. We have also demonstrated how the United States of America through their then ambassador Andrew Young celebrated the victory of ZANU-PF in 1980 when they said it was a victory for the Western world against the Soviet bloc, I mean against the socialist bloc. We have, we have spoken about this. And we have said when a genocide was happening in Matebele land and parts of Mikens, the British rolled out a red carpet, including the Americans, to the ZANU PF elite, including pres former President Robert Mugabe, who received the awards from the Queen of England. Right? So a pan-Africanist cannot commit a genocide. That's the first thing we must understand. And we've spoken about the fallout between the British, the Americans, and the ZAN over the Congo War of 1998. Then later, the chaotic land reform. So, as we are concluding, the MEC for Limpopo, the health MEC, is correct that uh, let the patients that are in hospitals, we have not contributed to the collapse of the health facilities in Zimbabwe and the economy receive treatment when they are in hospitals. But let the government of Zimbabwe pay. An invoice must be sent to the government of Zimbabwe. The reactionary forces who stand block hospital entrances should not be tolerated to say people should not access treatment in hospitals. Let people receive treatment in hospitals and the government of Zimbabwe must pay. As I'm saying, as I, I conclude, if the Zimbabwean government is built, it is going to come on the round table and begin to say, yes, we have a crisis. How do we deal with this crisis? And it's simple. Very simple to deal with the crisis in Zimbabwe. National planning. We have elaborated this in our, in our party program, the Zimbabwe Communist Party program, that you can only rebuild the Zimbabwean economy through national planning. You need to build a national democratic economy based on national planning linked to devolution of power to the people. Once you go through that path, in the next 10, 15 years, Zimbabwe will go back to what it was in 1990. It requires commitment. It requires honesty. Honest. It requires a leadership that understands that they are not the bosses, but they are the servants 
of the bid. Once the leadership understands that and begin to build a national democratic economy based on national planning, not based on a, 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 some, some uh, liberal policies, neoliberal policies, no. Based on national planning linked to devolution of power to the people, then you'll be beginning the long walk of rebuilding the Zimbabwean economy to an extent that you are going to reduce the numbers of people that will be flocking to South Africa. In any case, you will not have this influx. Please share your views. Uh, uh, write in the comment sections. I, 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 I want to thank <clears throat> I want to thank uh, South African comrades that always uh, comment in the comment section. Um, some might think that uh, they are harsh in their comments. They are correct. Uh, um, they, are, they are correct. And uh, their comments make us to realize, uh, which I'll talk about in the next video, the need to build a national democratic economy in Zimbabwe. But of course there are other rational reasons, but we'll talk about that in the next video. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, comrades, I'm Andrew.